Biobalance HealthCast, episode 153, Side Effects of Estrogen Replacement, part two. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Well, hopefully this is a welcome back. Uh, in our previous podcast, we were talking about side effects of estrogen treatment, uh, and we, we covered sort of the mild and the moderate ones, and we said on this podcast we would talk about uh, severe side effects and the treatments for those. For those of you that were not able to see the first podcast, you can go back. They're, they're out on the web. Uh, go to Kathy's website and look it up if you want to go back and get that information. Uh, so this represents a standalone conversation, but it's connected to a previous conversation. And we're going to talk about what are severe side effects that lead to major medical conditions when women have ERT, estrogen replacement therapy. It's rare, but it does happen, and so it has to be considered when you're trying to make the decision, should I get this done? So, t- yes. so talk to us about the more severe conditions that can develop. Okay. Well, most people, when they think about side effects of of um, estrogen replacement therapy, they Mm -hmm. think uterine cancer. Because uterine cancer was very prominent in the 60s and early 70s when women were given estrogen replacement alone even if they had a uterus. Okay. Okay, so they were given estrogen, no one checked their uterus, no one did anything until they had a large amount of vaginal bleeding. Then they went in and did biopsies and found cancer. So this is years of taking estrogen, which we call unopposed estrogen, meaning estrogen without progesterone. Okay. And at the time, what happened was they said, oh, estrogen is bad, it causes uterine cancer, instead of saying, oh, we need to prevent this. Well, but going back to our previous podcast, we were talking about people that that you had learned through years of doing this to Mm -hmm. do sonograms first Mm -hmm. before you give estrogen to see if there were pre-existing conditions that would be exacerbated, like a polyp. Right, that like might a polyp or a thick or lining. Might, yes. So now you've learned to do that, mm-hmm. but in the 60s, they didn't know to do that. And they didn't know to give progesterone So there are with... two things that could have then skewed the uterine cancer data right, out but, of the 60s. But the wives' tale still exists. Yes. And I, I guess what I'd like to stress is it's not just what you do, it's how you do it as a yeah. physician. Okay. So... It's important, we figured out that the safe way to give estrogen for women with a uterus was to give it with a progestin, although I would prefer a natural progesterone, Mm -hmm. okay? So, but that is safe because those two hormones together balance and they don't allow the lining to grow, grow, and grow. So they don't stimulate polyps as much in general, or fibroids as much if they're together. So we learned that, that you have to give progesterone. That prevented many cases of uterine cancer, but it was safe to give estrogen in that way. Then we learned that uh, if you do an ultrasound before, Mm -hmm. and if you're giving progesterone, you just need to do one before, and if there's any bleeding, you do another, just to make sure something, the patient was able to absorb the progesterone. She was, and this works for her. It doesn't work for everyone that we give progesterone with estrogen. Sometimes they still get a little lining that will bleed. And it's still a risk factor, even when we take care of all of these different different problems and we try to troubleshoot them, it still can be a problem. Partially in people who have BRCA1 and 2, which are the uh, genetic propens- the genetic risk for breast cancer, it also is ca- it also can cause or can lead to uterine cancer okay. and colon cancer. So those three cancers are on that genetic, on that genetic abnormality. So if you have those, then even if we do everything right, you you're still, still at risk mm-hmm. for uterine cancer. Okay. So one of the, so that's the first big risk of estrogen, but we figured out how to take care of it. Mm-hmm. The second big risk is deep venous thrombosis, vein um, clots that go to the heart, or clots that go to the lung called, called pulmonary emboli. Mm-hmm. So those are very those are very dangerous. They can cause sudden death. They can cause... How do you tell if you are subject or prone to that? There's a, there's a genetic test. It's a genetic marker again? Right. Okay. 
So, but it's a much, it's a specific genetic marker, mm -hmm. and there are seven different tests, and we can test you for that to see if you're at risk for blood clots. And if you like are, because my, my aunt is 84, mm -hmm. and she is now on blood thinners because she had a stroke, and they're worried about clotting issues. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's not the same thing as DVT. No, but it's the same. It's the same thing in terms of being a blood clot. But she had, she could have had a blood clot to her brain. May have been an, an arrhythmia, mm -hmm. and it may be something they can't control. So they're just trying to control the clotting part of it. Right. They can't control the reason. Right. So this so is that's something. What I was asking. The reason. This is something different. Isn't the same. This okay. is if you have this genetic problem and. You have, um, and you want to take estrogen, then special precautions have to be made. Okay. So we get, we actually, do, we do the testing in people who have already had a blood clot. The genetic testing. Genetic testing. Okay. And then they have to determine with their other doctors who've taken care of the blood clot if it's okay for them to get estrogen with aspirin or with folic acid. Sometimes folic acid and aspirin both help prevent blood clots. So that's one of the ways we troubleshoot this. Mm -hmm. If their doctor won't let them take estrogen, then we just give them testosterone alone. It's not as good, but it, it helps with some of the symptoms. And do, and do you find that many doctors are receptive to that conversation? Uh, they're getting more and more receptive as they're learning about the testing. Mm -hmm. One other way is to use non-oral estrogen. They found that non-oral estrogen is less likely to cause a blood clot than any other estrogen. In fact, it's only been in the last couple months that they've said, oh, other estrogens don't make you at higher risk, even if you have the genetics for it. Okay. So, but that's new information. I wouldn't expect every doctor in, in the country to know that. Sure. It just came out. It's not their specialty, they may not. They may not know on. that. Right. But that's an important thing to ask for, if you know you have this genetic risk or you've had one before, to ask for a non-oral estrogen. Okay. Because this can be a devastating thing. And so the, what you're saying then, if I understand correctly, is mm -hmm. that non-oral estrogen will not feed into the risk of blood clotting if you have DVT genetically. Right. Okay. I still give them aspirin. <laughs> just to I'm be hedging my bets. One more plus. One more, yeah. one more thing just to yeah. keep, keep the platelets mm -hmm. from clotting. So there's one thing to be trusting the studies. There's another thing to be trusting the studies and using common sense. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do. They call it common sense, but it really isn't. Because <laughs> it it's not common. common. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the other things, the only reason this is significant, it's, it's the growth of fibroids in the uterus. Mm -hmm. if, uter if estrogen is given, especially orally, has a much higher chance of making fibroids that are little benign muscle growths grow. Now fibroids grow in pregnancy, they grow during the 40 to 50 range, but after menopause they usually shrink because there's no estrogen. So when we give estrogen back, estradiol back, then fibroids can grow and that can cause a problem in terms of just the size of it, which would necessitate a hysterectomy or they have um, embolizations if there's only just one is, fibroid growing. Is it a fibroid tumor? Yeah, but tumor is kind of a funny name. Tumor, it's not cancer. Uh -huh. It's just a it's growth. It's just a growth. But it's a growth that can get really big inside your pelvis and right. it puts pressure on everything else. And then you become uncomfortable. And, and it, well, it can put pressure on your bladder, you can lose urine, it can put pressure on your ureters, it can back up urine if they're big enough. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that you would just say, oh yeah, I'm just going to, you know, I'll let that go. Right. Some people need surgery and I consider that a side effect of taking estrogen. Now that's different than fibroid tumors or fibroid growths that you get in your breast tissue? Yeah, it is. Okay. They are different, but they still have fibrous tissue in them, so they're right. called fibroids. Okay, I, I, so I don't know. That's it's one I'm... of those pathologic uh, names that many things that we have in medicine are based on the cell type that's in them uh -huh. and not where they are or if they're similar. And to a layman, you say fibroid, and I think it's all one breast. One you think thing. it's breast, and sure. this is this is fibroids of the uterus. Okay. So that's that's really what I'm I'm concerned about here. So that's that's the third thing. It's easily treated by hysterectomy, but hysterectomy is a major surgery, and so I consider this a major side effect of replacing estrogen. But you can do it safer than 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 a hysterectomy. Than a, you can do it well. You can do it safer than a hysterectomy if you use 
There's certain other th troubleshooting things you can use, like Arimidex, that can help shrink them. But we'll talk about that when we talk about the real, the real estrogen that's causing trouble when, when you take estradiol. So, okay. The last medical s side effect that is severe is our liver tumors, and that goes along with benign. They're benign, but they still are tumors in in the liver, and they are caused by oral estrogen, birth control pills or oral estrogen that's estrogen that's given as a pill. It, they are not caused by the other types of estrogen. Non-oral okay. doesn't cause this. But they can cause trouble because you can go to the doctor and they'll see a tumor and they'll go, uh-oh, you know, we need to do something about it. And that can mm -hmm. be devastating as well because mm -hmm. it's very hard to operate on the liver. Right. So we just want people to know that that is a side effect, but only of certain types. So... The way we talked about this a little earlier in our, in our previous um, discussion, we, talk, we talked about how do you find the safest estrogen right. to take. So um, we have we've kind of set up in our minds a grid of, of safest to most dangerous. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so a safest, uh, if we're looking at what type of estrogen, safest would be bioidentical, more, most dangerous would be a synthetic type. Okay, so mm -hmm. then we're looking at how do you take it. Mm -hmm. Safest would be under the skin or vaginally or under the tongue and uh, the most so dangerous non would, non-oral, yeah. the most dangerous would be oral. Oral, then, and, and the reason for that is with oral, it gets metabolized by the digestive system and right. broken down into other components. Right, into byproducts that are, are dangerous. Okay, and, and if you don't put it in your mouth and in your digestive system, then your body absorbs it in a more pure form. Yes, okay. absolutely, thank you. Um, then the safest, there are three estrogens. There's estradiol, young women's estrogen, mm -hmm. estrone, old women's estrogen, coming from mostly from the adrenal gland, and estriol, pregnant estrogen. So the safest estrogen is estradiol, young woman's estrogen, and the most effective. And estrone is the estrogen you don't want. You're already making it after menopause. Mm -hmm. And it causes actually most of the problems as being a byproduct of, es of estradiol. Okay. So it's one of the problems that stimulates breast tissue that you make after your pill goes through your liver, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of estrone, gives you belly fat. Many of the other side effects that we discuss come from estrone and we're, we're gonna talk about that. And then the last actually delivery system, subcutaneous pellets like what I do, that's why I do it, are safer and have fewer side effects than even the other non-oral like gels, creams, and patches. Okay. They make more estrone than a pellet. Okay, so what you use is a pellet that you inject under the skin, subcutaneous, <coughs> into the fat tissues, and it dissolves over time into mm -hmm. the bloodstream. Yes. The creams and patches and gels have to be administered much more frequently, mm -hmm. sometimes daily, sometimes multiple mm -hmm. times a day, and they each have their own issues in terms of your lifestyle, you know, how, how convenient is it Will you really do it? Gel. Will you really do it? Will you, Will you really be do compliant? That's a huge issue. And also, which, which regulates your dosage, which right. affects the delivery of the chemicals to balance your body. Right. And, and really, your body, when it was young, was making estrogen all the time. Right. And so that's what we want to mimic. We mm -hmm. want to be, mimic estrogen production all the time. But it was making the estradiol, estradiol. when you were young. Yes. Now that you're old, it's still doing it, but it's turning out a. a a lesser form called an, estrone. Estrone, and it's coming from a, a different organ. Your ovaries already, they call it senescence, gone mm -hmm. to sleep, but you're at- Yeah, I hear that a lot, senescence. <laughs> senescence. Uh, so, and then your adrenal gland makes most of the estrone, and the fat, you make estrone and fat. So the fatter, okay. the more fat you have, the more estrone you make, and that is why being obese is a risk for breast cancer, because estrone's the bad guy. Estrone is the bad estrogen, not estradiol. Mm -hmm. And estrone is what stimulates breast cancers in the breast. So it's very, it's safest to find the lowest estrogen or estrone producing estrogen. Yes. So if you're already obese, mm -hmm. it would, 
it would be a good thing for you to consider getting pellets? Yes. Yes, because we give testosterone and that suppresses your estrone. It helps you lose fat and gain muscle, mm -hmm. which burns calories, which helps you over time lose weight. You don't just shrink down to a size six. Right. But I mean, over time, it gives you a chance to have your uh, exercise and your diets work. So because you're combating the estrone production. Right, and it decreases your risk of, of breast cancer. Okay, excellent. So, so we were talking about estrone. It is a byproduct of oral. That's why I'm so against oral estrogen. Mm -hmm. It is made in the liver. That's what we don't want. And then um, one, it's pretty much the source of all the side effects. It causes breast tenderness. It causes growth of fibroids. It, it causes belly fat. Mm -hmm. And um, many of the other um, mild and moderate side effects are caused by estrone itself. So if we can get the estrone down, the side effect pr uh, profile goes down. So some of the ways that we can troubleshoot this. How okay. do we make this happen? Right. How do we give you estradiol, yet not get the side effects? Yes. So, so that um, it stays as estradiol and doesn't... Right. Okay. So that we can use it, just like our ovary made it, we can use it and not have the side effect of making estrone out of it. We made very little estrone when we were young. Because as testosterone's high, estrone's low. When testosterone drops, estrone goes up. But it's our primary estrogen when we're in menopause. That's why we have so many problems. So you would generally say, if you're considering estrogen pellets, mm -hmm. you ought to also consider testosterone yes. pellets? Yes. And combine the two? Yes, if you're in menopause, you, you should. Mm -hmm. Because those are the two, that's, that's a good that's treatment. That's the best one-two punch for getting rid of the estrone. Right, so it decreases okay. your side effects. All right. So it's, it's a very good answer to all of these side effects that we've been talking about to prevent them. Right. So today we're concentrating on estrogen and the side effects and the issues and the treatment protocols and adjustments for balancing the right amount of estrogen. But one of the things we want to remember to mention is that one of those interventions is the administration of testosterone. Right. Okay. That's right. Some other things, over the counter you can get a, a, a supplement called DIM, D-I-M, and that decreases the production of estrone. So that's a, a nice, you can do this yourself. It helps you lose some belly fat. It di helps. Dolly methane? Yeah. Di indol, indole methane. <laughs> it's made up from cauliflower and broccoli, but it's, it's changed. They cleave off part of, of the molecule. So, so it looks different than cauliflower and broccoli, and it's in a pill form. And it tastes better than methane yeah. generally. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that would, be, that would be your initial task. The second task to help any of these side effects, especially breast tenderness, would be to uh, take a medication called Arimidex. And we have our testosterone pellets mixed with Arimidex. So oftentimes we don't have to give you another pill. We can just give you a testosterone and Arimidex pellet to decrease the production of estrone. Okay. And so then it's kind of a two for one. You don't have to deal with it. You don't have to take something every day. You just have it put in the pellet. Right. So that makes it a lot easier. So you can take it as a, a supplement uh, orally. Right. right. Or They're not you... exactly the same, mm -hmm. but the supplement's not nearly as strong. The, the um, Arimidex is stronger. Right. If you need more help, then you can go to the drug. Okay. It's a drug we use to we 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 use primarily to treat breast cancer or prevent it, but it also works uh, well to prevent the estrone when you're miles away from breast cancer. It decreases your risk of getting it, so it's very nice to have that and then get the benefits of no side effects of your estradiol. Sure. So other things you can do: you can exercise every day aerobically. You can stop drinking alcohol and you can lose weight. Those are the other things that can decrease your side effects of taking estradiol. So if you want to do this yourself first, then you can do those things, take DIM, and then consider getting your testosterone replaced as well and Arimidex. So for those women who are particularly cautious about taking things, there are things that you can do to reduce your risk and your discomfort from side effects. But they involve lifestyle changes. They, they involve, involve exercise diet and, and exercise and alcohol reduction and uh, a couple of deprivation yeah. and you have withdrawal to have, yeah. loss. <laughs> and you have to have you have to have self control. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't eat that 
cupcake. You don't, you have to exercise. You have to set it in your schedule so every day you exercise at a certain time. My wife says they put it on my plate, but they don't put it in my mouth. <laughs> That's a good one. She pushes it away. Absolutely. That's right. It's like yeah. the bread. You don't. You should never ask for bread Absolutely. at the restaurant. You just yeah. have to send it back. Well, and you know, one of the biggest damning things that we've done <laughs> culturally is teach our children to clean their plates. I know. What was that? What was that from? It was from? something out of the 50s. It just, we, so many of our generation mm -hmm. and younger grew up saying you have to clean your plate. I remember my dad saying, your mother worked really hard to make this meal. You're going to appreciate it. Clean your plate. It's you know. an immigrant philosophy, too, or it used to be. Was it? Because we didn't have enough food. We never had enough food. We never had enough food, so you better eat it all. Yeah. My, my father was always, eat your lasagna. Eat all your lasagna, but you're fat. Eat your lasagna, but you're fat. You've got, you've got to lose weight. And it's yeah. like the Don't double message. Yeah. Don't waste food. But, yeah. but, but, it's, <laughs> but it's wasting it to prepare and serve too much. Right. <laughs> that's, Our portions that's, are they're, too they're large. They were treating the wrong end of the problem. Well, this, this is, I think, probably, if you want to save yourself from, from breast cancer, estradiol, non-orally, does not cause breast cancer and treats a lot of other symptoms. Mm -hmm. But you should, your biggest risk is obesity. And obesity is rampant in the United States. Right. So you are going to have to change your lifestyle, change what you buy, throw everything in your pantry out. Stop eating cereal. Cereal is the stupidest thing I've ever seen Grains to eat. Grains and, and sugars. Yeah, cereal is just wasted calories. You, unless you're going out to run a marathon, it's not very good for you. Yeah. And so, you know, eat a real eat a real breakfast, vegetables and fruit and and meat and eggs. Something that is that is not junk food. So, so, so we digress into dietary well, proselytizing. Well, because that's what you can do right now. Yeah. You can do that Without right an now, intervention, and you can still take your estradiol and get rid of all those symptoms, and we can troubleshoot all of, of the possible side effects without causing any harm. And so that's really what you need to take away, is that you shouldn't deprive yourself of estradiol, the young woman's estrogen, because there are going to be so many, so many problems associated with not taking estrogen. You should... You should take care of yourself and replace what's missing and replace your estradiol, but do it safely and do it so that you don't get the side effects. It should, the treatment should not be worse you wanna, than what you're getting rid of. You want to arm your body to be prepared for the maximum possible outcome and benefit, but that also implies or means that you have to live a healthier life. You have to watch your intake, your consumption, your exercise, and so on. But if your body has the right ingredients then you maximize the return from exercise and diet maintenance mm -hmm. and, and living a healthy lifestyle. It's not just a one-way street. You can't just take a pill and have it go away. You have to do something, too. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.